All right, what do I do for the next quick tip? Uh, did that. <laughs> yeah, I did that, did that. Ah, now there's an idea. While HitFilm doesn't come with a built-in page turn transition, it's not that difficult to make one from scratch. After importing your source material, bring it into an empty comp and duplicate it. I recommend renaming the top layer to add the word back on the end just for clarity. Add a point layer and name it Page Control. We'll use this in just a second. One of the keys to this transition is the reflection effect, which will drop onto the back version of our material. In its properties, set the center to target the page control point layer and its rotation angle to 270. So what we want is to keep the reflected portion of this layer, but hide the rest, and we're going to achieve that with the set matte effect. To set this up, add a plane, make it the same dimensions as the comp, the color doesn't matter because we won't see it, and I'm going to name this plane Cutter. Change the plane's anchor point to be on the very top edge. In my case, that's a Y value of 540. Scale it to 300%, parent it to the page control point layer, and turn off its visibility. On the back version of our material, add the set matte effect. Set its target to be the Cutter plane, and change its blend property to subtract. This cuts out the non-reflected part, leaving only the reflection, which represents the back of our turning page. The layer below it containing the unmodified material is the front of our page, but we need to hide the part that's past the edge of the turn. This can be easily done by simply copying the set matte effect from the back version. Now as you drag the page control point, you can see the basic page turning effect in real time, with the reflected back being revealed. It's not very interesting just turning straight up, so we'll make a few adjustments so that it turns from a corner. The main angle can be set pretty easily by simply rotating the page control point. Unfortunately, the reflection effect doesn't automatically match it, but the math to make it match is pretty simple. Just take the angle of the point and subtract it from 270. Set this value on the angle property of the reflection effect. To animate the page turn, Simply set two keyframes on the page control point to go from one edge or corner to the other. Because it's tough to see the turning portion of the page on top of the original, I recommend adding a couple other effects for clarity. To make it appear as though you're seeing a hint of the original material through the back of a piece of paper, add the curves effect to the top of the effect stack on the back version and take the point on the lower left and drag it up. You could also use the brightness and contrast effect, but for my test, that won't let you push the values quite like curves can. Finally, add the drop shadow effect to the back version. For this particular angle, I found that the following adjustments worked out pretty well. Set the angle to 115, the distance to 20, opacity to 0.75, and penumbra to 66. To further sell the idea that this turning page is gradually letting light onto the material below it, add a black plane underneath everything and keyframe its opacity to go from about 25% to 0% during the first few frames of the page turn. And there you go, a fairly easy page turn effect that's fully customizable. Now, to use the effect on a smaller page, as in my intro, Put your source material into a full-size comp, shrink or crop it to your liking, then drop that comp into another comp to make the page turn. Otherwise, the reflection effect will be constrained by the dimensions of your source. Thanks for watching. Please give this a like if you found it useful, and subscribe to be notified of future quick tips. Until next time, clever tagline.